Dandy, obviously a, a very disappointing result. What disappointed you most about that performance tonight? Um, yeah, incredibly disappointing. I thought we'd had a good preparation. Um, obviously, some guys in and out of practice uh, impacts that, but I thought our preparation was good. You know, managing bodies at this time of the year to get them through. The most disappointing thing was we just got outworked. Like, they just played harder than us. Um, you know, we, we talked about it in the locker room, about what the strengths of, of the Cairns are. Um, they're playing good basketball right now. I think, is that seven in a row for them? Um, you know, undermanned without Keanu and, and Forty's crook. So the most disappointing thing is just the the lack of energy that we brought to the game um, for for the most part. You know, we had a couple of patches and, and Cody gave us good energy and we we found a little spark at the end of the third, but we were down by at that stage by 30. So it's kind of too little too late. Um, so the most disappointing thing for me is the, the lack of energy, um, the lack of attention to scout detail, the lack of attention to how we wanted to try and control the game. You know, we just played right into their hands, played at, played at their tempo, played at their pace, um, and allowed them to dictate terms. So that's, I guess, in a nutshell, the the most disappointing aspect of that one. Especially at home as well, Ben, I mean, you've had some tough losses so far this year, but they've all been on the road, but against the Queen, in a Queensland derby against Kansas, as good as they've been, to, to do it in front of your home, home fans that must have an extra sting in the time yeah um look i think our our membership and our fan base has been fantastic this year despite us being five and 15 another really good crowd tonight i i guess over four thousand. it was loud um they keep turning up and supporting this team and, and we didn't give them a performance was that was worthy of how they turned out and, and they're supporting us like that's the the bottom line um from starts with me as a head coach and, and all, the, all the way down to, you know, Hunter and Johnsy as our development players. Like, the performance collectively wasn't good enough um, for the support that we're getting. Um, Queensland derby, our backs against the wall, you know, we, we need to win basically every game to give ourselves a chance of doing anything this year. Um, you know, against a team that's playing their third game in five days, like, they could have had all the excuses in the world to not show up and play hard. But they found a way. They found energy in, like, McCall gives them energy. Benny Air gives them energy. Hogue gives them energy. Like, you know, they, they have a lot of guys who who give energy to the group. And, you know, we we didn't have that tonight. Was so injured? Was he not well? He, I mean, he'd been in such great form recently. But that was a, a very quiet night by what the very lofty standards we expect of him. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Sobes is a little beat up right now. Um, not going to hide from it. Like he, he was uh, maybe or maybe not to, to play this game. And to his credit, um, you know, we spoke this morning. He said, "Yep, I'm going to go. Give you everything I got." Um, so he's he's a pro. Um, you know, he he's meticulous with his body and like he's beat up right now. He's been playing a lot of minutes. You know, what are we at? We're 20 games into the season carrying a heavy load and, and he was you know touch and go to, to even play tonight but to his credit he did play and yeah he's carrying carrying some injuries right now that, that we need to manage throughout these these next eight games and what, last one from me Manny what was the last what was the message to the players post match um, look I'll, I'll keep that internal um, that's that's what is said in the locker room and we'll keep that between us and we need to be better when we play the best team in the league next Wednesday alright thanks that's all for me cheers Greg, it, it obviously wasn't a night full of positives, but the other night, um, when when I asked Tyler Johnson about his season and how much he cared about this team, you could hear in his voice how much he cared, and he showed tonight how much he cared. He obviously didn't get enough helpers tonight, but did you like what you saw from him? Yeah, love it. Like, TJ's a hell of a basketball player. There's no doubt about that. He's a he's an NBA veteran. There's a reason why he's played in that league for so long. Um, you know, he's starting to feel comfortable in this league and like the adjustment for him to FIBA basketball has been significant. Um, you know, you watch some of his defensive habits and offensive things that he does. You can see that the shift from the NBA game to the FIBA game has been challenging for him. Um, you know, I think we've started to find ways to, to unlock 
his skill set and, and allow him to play to the to, the, to his strengths. So, um, you know, he got a boost today as well with some, like, yesterday I think his family flew in. Like, these two boys are out here from the States. So, you know, um, he's got some extra juice at the moment, which is, which is awesome. Um, Tyler is a first-class human being, um, one of the one of the best guys that I've been around, every guy on this roster, and Cody can attest to this, everybody loves him. Um, he, he's certainly given a lot of himself to the group and sacrificed a lot for the group, and it was good, you know, over these last two games to see him have opportunities to go and take over games and, you know, 32 points, four assists, four steals. You know, he, he gave us a lot tonight, um, you know, when, when he's playing hurt as well. It was an exciting glimpse into the future to see what Cody did in that in that fourth quarter as well. Is that is that another positive you can you can take? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, stats had kind of taken his lumps this year and he got hurt with the ankle as he was starting to play some good basketball. So, you know, you, you miss what is it, six weeks, I think, for, for Cody and um, you know, I think the biggest thing for stat and you know, we keep getting on him as coaches like just the the consistency for him as a, as a young professional. Um, and you see the flashes like tonight, like he has some real tools to be a very, very good pro for a long time in this league. Um, and, and we're here to help him unlock that and, and be consistent as a, as, a, as a young professional athlete. And you know, we saw some things tonight and, and look, maybe I should have given him more opportunity early in the game. Um, you know, maybe he could have dug us out of rut with some energy. Um, and you know, that's like this last eight games now. Um, you know, he's, he needs to be ready to play. And, and when you get your opportunities, you've got to make the most of them. And he certainly did that tonight, so credit to Cody. On the back of that, Cody, I guess two-part question. <clears throat> how much did you enjoy getting the chance to get out there in that fourth quarter and show what you can do? And how much are you hoping to, to show more of that now for the rest of the season? Yeah, I mean, it was great. Um, all us bench guys are always going to be ready. Um, we put the work in and stuff like that, like the rest of the guys. And getting my name caught at the end there, I just, in my own mind, I just wanted to go out there, be aggressive, and see what I could do. And I did that, and it turned out to do like good things for me, which was good. <clears throat> Obviously, with the injury and everything else that's been happening this season, it's been a pretty tough rookie season for you. But, I mean, how much are you now hoping to make the most of these, these last eight games? And and you know, build on it to show what you can do moving forward. Yeah, exactly. Um, like I said, I've just got to be ready the whole time and I'm going to bring the energy when I get on the court and don't lack any confidence and just be confident with the ball. And when it's my chance to do what I know I can do, I've just got to do that and help the team in any way I can. <clears throat> Vandy, another massive differential in the, the foul count and the free throw count tonight. Are you getting any closer to finding out either what you're doing wrong or why it keeps happening you know, against you in, in games? Um, no, short answer. Uh, that's probably all I got to say on that. You know, I mean, we shoot 37 shots in the paint at you know 60%. Tyler's on the rim the whole night, and he shoots. How many free throws did Tyler? He went six or seven of our 13 foul shots. Um, you know, where our foul discipline is poor. Um, our reactiveness to calls right now is poor and that's something that we need to fix as well. I think we worry and get caught up too much in things that we can't control and, and one of those is the officiating. Um, you know, there's, there's going to be inconsistencies, there's going to be... Sometimes it goes our way, like, um, but I think right now we, we get too caught up in it. But like I said in Adelaide, it's frustrating the, the group, um, you know, 23 to 5 free throw disparity at halftime. Um, you know, it's not, it's no wonder guys are heated about it. Um, but in terms of clarity and answers, I, I don't have any. Um, you know, some guys, yeah, I, 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 don't, <laughs> I don't really have a good answer about it because I, I don't have answers for it. Like 35 to, 13 um, is, is significant, 25 to 15 foul count is a significant disparity. Um, you know, do, we, we need to be better defensively, we're too handsy, um, but in saying that, I'd like to see us get the same rewards when we attack the rim, that's, that's for sure, and get manhandled in the backcourt, and you know, Aaron Baines is the strongest human being in the league, so what is, what doesn't look like contact on Bainesy um, is potentially illegal when 
it doesn't impact his movement or his body because he's so strong. But it's almost a disadvantage that he's so strong because defenders are allowed to do certain things against him to gain an advantage, but it doesn't actually impact him. So, yeah, it's 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 frustrating. Uh, we'll continue searching for answers and we'll continue to, to grind away at practice and, and get better and, um, you know, tidy up some of our habits defensively that's putting us in these positions. I find it a bit hard to understand it too. That's why I, I asked the question, I guess. But um, the, the last one, you got six days now before you play the Kings. It'll probably be a long six days, but... What do you need to see from the team when you do get back out there? Um, I think the competitiveness, the first thing. Like, we, we need everybody on the floor at practice on Saturday when we come back to it. Um, we, we need to compete. We need to have an energy and an intent about us that's representative of, of a professional basketball team and, and representative of this organisation. Um, so we've got a choice right now. As professionals and as men, we can either shut up shop and mail it in for the next eight games and it can be a really long and miserable four weeks or we can compete and play for each other and bring the right intent as pros and concentrate on the things that impact winning um, not not getting caught up in what's going wrong for me um, so in, in terms of that like we're going to keep practicing we're going to keep coaching. We're going to keep trying to get better. We're going to do the individual work. The coaches are going to cut the film. Um, you know, we're going to prepare the scout. We're not going to shift away from that and just shut up shop. Like we're going to keep getting better or trying to get better and and preparing to play a basketball game that's representative of of professional.